gun control. Understand that today's Democrats in the Senate, these are not your father's Democrats. There are no moderate Democrats left in Congress. Today's Democrats, when it comes to guns, their objective is to disarm law-abiding citizens. They simultaneously embrace policies that release violent criminals from jail. They're not interested in locking up murderers. They're not interested in locking up gang bangers. They're not interested in locking up violent criminals. Instead, they systematically support policies that release violent criminals. By the way, if you, if you are hesitant to believe me when I say this, perhaps you'll believe the mayor of Dallas, the mayor of Dallas, Eric Johnson, who's a friend. He's a lifelong Democrat. He's an African-American mayor, elected in Dallas, been a Democrat his whole life until just recently. He left the Democrat Party and became a Republican. Now, let me read you why Mayor Johnson became a Republican. Quote, unfortunately, many of our cities are in disarray. Mayors and other local elected officials have failed to make public safety a priority or to exercise fiscal restraint. Most of these local leaders are proud Democrats who view cities as laboratories for liberalism rather than as havens for opportunity and free enterprise. Too often, local tax dollars are spent on policies that exacerbate homelessness, coddle criminals, and make it harder for ordinary people to make a living. And too many local Democrats insist on virtue signaling, proposing half-baked government programs that aim to solve every single societal ill and on finding new ways to thumb their noses at, at Republicans at the state and federal level. It, it's, I have to say to an ordinary person, the political ideology of today's Democrats makes no sense. Why your priority is disarming a law-abiding citizen, but not going after the violent criminal. And, and to be clear, it is the radical left that advocates abolishing the police and defunding the police. And when I say there are no moderate Democrats left, the Biden administration has nominated not one, not two, but three of the leading advocates of abolishing the police to senior positions at the, at the U.S. Department of Justice. Every single Democrat on this committee voted to confirm every single one of them, but not just on this committee. Every single Democrat in the United States Senate voted to, co to confirm all three of the Biden nominees, including Rachel Rollins, Nominated by the U.S. attorney in Massachusetts, one of the leading advocates of abolishing the police as a local prosecutor, she put out a list of violent crimes that she wouldn't prosecute. You know what? We're not having a hearing on the impact of Soros prosecutors releasing violent criminals from jail. We're not having a hearing on carjacking in Washington, D.C., because the Democrat City Council lowered the penalty for carjacking, lowered the penalty for murder. We're not having a hearing on Congressman Henry Cuellar, a Democrat from Texas who was carjacked in Washington, D.C. at 930 at night. We're also not having a hearing on the Antifa and Black Lives Matter riots across the country, because to Democrats, when stores are being looted, when, fire, when police cars are being firebombed, when police officers are being murdered, that's not a crisis if they agree with the ideology of the criminals. Instead, their objective is they want to take away the firearm from the single mom who's taking the subway home at night who that is the only prevention she has against the violent criminals that the Democrats are unleashing. And by the way, to give you an, a, a, an underscoring of it, look, we have a mental health crisis in this country. I've repeatedly introduced legislation to improve school safety, to invest to double the number of police officers in schools. Democrats objected. To invest $15 billion in mental health counselors in schools. Democrats objected. Their priority is not stopping the criminals. Their priority is disarming law-abiding citizens. And by the way, they call it a public health crisis because they want to put supposed experts in charge of disarming you. 
The Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights is not a public health crisis. What is a public health crisis is the crime rates that are skyrocketing because Democrats keep letting murderers and violent criminals out of jail. But, Dr. Rainey, let me ask you a question in terms of public health. Right now, today, what's the leading cause of death for Americans age 18 to 45? I believe that it's opioids. Uh, it is. It is drug overdoses. Last year, more than 100,000 Americans died of drug overdoses. 70% of that came from Chinese fentanyl that is flooding across our southern border because this administration has opened up our southern border to 8.6 million illegal immigrants, has enriched the drug traffickers. Do you think, Dr. Rainey, that fentanyl flooding across our open border on the south that has killed collectively 100,000 overdoses last year. Do you think that's a public health crisis? Absolutely. Synthetic fentanyl is a major crisis, and Senator Reid from my home state of Rhode Island has been a leader in trying to stop the supply of synthetic fentanyl. Except he hasn't, States. because Senator Reid, along with every other Democrat, supports Joe Biden's open borders, because when we try to secure the borders, they block it over and over and over again. And the criminals who come across, who are taking people's lives... That is because the Democrats refuse to enforce and the law. Senator Cruz, equally important is harm reduction to ensure that those who use opioids have access to things like Suboxone or buprenorphine and methadone to help so that they don't use illicit substances off the street. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Whitehouse.